A small town magician and con artist, desperately trying to earn a living is being hurled away into a magical reality, where he's entangled within the feud of rival sisters, compelling him to use science to battle with the supernatural. Will he survive this new universe? Let's find out. The movie begins with a black and white montage of a traveling circus in Kansas depicting the year 1905. Our protagonist, Oscar Diggs, is a womanizing magician who despite being ambitious, is barely earning enough to keep himself going. One day, he had just recruited an assistant, May, to help him with his show as a planned volunteer when he requires one. He gifts her a music box belonging to his grandmother who died in battle, this belonged to my grandmother. saying she should cherish it with all her heart. His main assistant, Frank, reminds him of his next show, so he prepares for it. The next magic show begins, and Oz asks for a volunteer, a lot of hands are up, however, May totally forgot her role and had to be reminded that she's the planned volunteer. Frank produces a series of sound effects backstage, setting the mood right for every piece of action. As her supposedly unconscious body floats, an angry man in the crowd pointed a wire holding her body, but this is part of Oz's plan as he cuts down the wires and her body is still suspended in the air much to their amazement. A young girl on a wheelchair in the front row who had been watching in awe, asks Oz to heal her and make her walk, saying she believes in him, but Oz isn't that kind of wizard, the crowd turns on him, booing and hissing, and Frank had to close the curtains and end the show abruptly. Back in the cabin, Oz yells at his assistant Frank, noting that he should have closed the curtain sooner. Frank is unhappy with how Oz treats him but finds a way to coexist with abuses from his master. Next, Oz's old flame Annie visits him. It appears that she knows about his fake magic, but doesn't mind this. However, she regrettably informs him that another man proposed to her and she wanted to tell him first. The pair's chemistry is obvious, but Oz's philandering has ruined anything they might have had. Soon their heartfelt conversation is interrupted by the circus strong man, who wants to end Oz because it appears that Oz has had an affair with his mate, and also gifted her a music box belonging to his grandmother. Oz congratulates Annie on her engagement, kisses her, then scrambles to safety in the incoming swirling storm. Oz gets into a hot air balloon, however the strong man grabs its tether and pulls it back down. Oz manages to cut off the rope as Frank tosses his magic bag to him and he escapes. But the victory is cut short as the hot air balloon is sucked into a tornado. After nearly being impaled dozens of times in the basket, he made a couple promises to be a good man. Soon, Oz emanates in a brilliant and colorful mystic land filled with gigantic sentient plants and butterflies. Then his balloon is submerged in a shallow river and he's forced to rush out as tiny little fairies bite his legs. As he screams out for help, a beautiful young and naive lady named Theodora appears from amongst the bushes. She noted that she saw his balloon fall from the sky. He tells her that his name is Oz, and she is stunned. Apparently the late king's prophecy foretold that a wizard named Oz, the name of their land, would descend from the heavens and save them from the wicked witch. Theodora fills him with hopes of him being their king after defeating the wicked witch due to the prophecy, and stated that she's a witch herself. So Oz jokes that all witches must be green, and must ride a broom, to which Theodora responds that there are good witches and wicked witches, and that she is simply a good witch. As they converse, they hear mysterious growling from the forest and Theodora recognizes it as the sound of the wicked witch's minions sent to kill Oz, the two desperately flee the scene and take refuge in an alcove, they're almost caught by the beast, however, Oz, thinking on his feet, reaches into his hat and retrieves a white dove which he releases into the air and it distracts the monster as it flies after it. Oz uses his charms to attract Theodora and she soon falls for it, he gives her a music box, telling her, oh, this belonged to my grandmother. Both of them dance and had fun all night. The following day, the duo head towards the city. Theodora tells him she belongs with him and she'll be honored to be his queen when he's crowned king. Shortly, they come across a winged monkey stuck in the vines and is screaming for help. Theodora suggests the wizard should help free the monkey which is supposed to be an easy task. Eager to amaze her, he easily cut the vines. However, Oz soon realizes that the vines weren't the threat and a massive lion appears and attacks them. Without hesitation, the scared Oz reaches into his jacket pocket and conjures up red smoke that scares the lion away. Theodora, now convinced that Oz is indeed the true wizard from the prophecy, thanks him, and the monkey, Finley, swears life allegiance after learning he's the true wizard sent to save them. As Theodora leaves to prepare a caravan, Oz immediately tells the shocked Finley that he is not the wizard that Theodora thinks he is, and he's just a con man, with a few tricks up his sleeve, and he can't tell Theodora. Finley is disappointed but has already sworn a life of servitude, so he has no choice but to oblige. They come across a caravan of horses and soldiers with their leader, Nuck, who is skeptical into believing that Oz is the true wizard, however they get into a carriage and head towards Emerald City. Later, in the throne room, 
Theodora introduces Oz to her sister Evanora, another witch with a green necklace around her neck. Evanora also feels a little skeptical into believing Oz is their future king, but she has long awaited his arrival, so she and Theodora take him to the throne, which Oz treats with little respect. Oz excuses the sisters to go to the king's chambers, and while they're alone, Evanora scolds her sister Theodora for quickly believing Oz to be the wizard from the prophecy, and also accuses her to be in league with the wicked witch. Enraged, Theodora shoots a fireball from her hands, revealing her temper issues. Evanora agrees to entertain Oz until she can fully prove that he's a fraud. Later, she escorts Oz into the kingdom's vault. Here we see tons of gold and all the riches of the kingdom supposedly belonging to whomever is king. Oz instantly dives into the pile of gold and celebrates. However, Evanora reminds him that he isn't king yet and to become one, he has to fulfill the prophecy and rid the land of the wicked witch before he can assume the throne and claim the riches. Realizing that his kingship comes with a huge price, Oz is saddened and begins to believe that he'll never be king as he can't bring himself low to kill someone. However, Evanora tells him he only needs to defeat the wicked witch by breaking her magic wand in the dark forest. Oz is confident that it's now an easy task, so he readies himself and Finley, headed to the dark forest without saying goodbye to Theodora, implying that she'll get over him like the other women do. En route to the dark forest, the duo come across a recently annihilated town so they go to investigate. Inside, the entire city is made of ceramics which have been completely obliterated by the wicked witch's baboons. Before leaving, Oz and Finley hear soft sobs coming from a building. Inside the duo finds China Girl, who reveals that the entire city was rejoicing upon hearing the arrival of the wizard. This makes the wicked witch send her minions to decimate the entire town for defying her. After the assault, China Girl lost her folks and is paralyzed. However, Oz reaches for an instant dry glue in his bag and is able to fix her up using magic in a bottle. The China Girl is a callback to the girl in the wheelchair from Kansas, and this time, Oz is able to fix her shattered legs and helps her get to her feet. She happily thanks Oz and Finley, then decides to tag along into the dark forest much to Oz's dismay who feels she's as fragile as she looks. Later, they arrive at the dark forest and as they fearfully make their way through, they're being attacked by carnivorous plants that tries to eat them. However, the trio hastily leave the area and venture deeper into the forest. They come across a cemetery. Here, they see a hooded figure approaching with a magic wand, then places the wand on a cart. Oz, deducing that it's the Wicked Witch, sends Finley to distract her while he grabs the wand when she's not looking. He is about to break it but the witch stops him. She takes of her hood and is identical to Annie from his previous life. The witch reveals herself to be Glinda the Good, Witch of the South. Glinda explains that Evanora, who is also her sister, is the true wicked witch, and she poisoned her father to seize the throne for herself whilst framing Glinda for murder. When Glinda learned of Evanora's treachery, she left Emerald City to the south with her people. In Emerald City, we see that Evanora is watching in a crystal ball as her plans to kill the wizard fail. Feeling frustrated, she orders her armies and winged baboons to kill both Oz and Glinda. Back in the graveyard, Oz, Glinda, China Girl and Finley hear soldiers marching towards them with the intent to kill them. Glinda asks Oz to do something, however Oz, being just a fake magician advises them to run for their lives. Glinda takes out her wand and produces a thick fog out of the ground to mask their escape, but it's not enough as they're surrounded by baboons that sends them running to the edge of a cliff. Without any option left, the four of them took a leap of faith and they emerge in huge floating bubbles that takes them to a small city within a much bigger bubble. Glinda designed the city bubble to keep out anyone with an evil intention in their heart. They all easily pass through the bubble, however, Oz fearing that he's both good and evil, bounces a few times before finally able to pass through. Back in Emerald City, Everona isn't pleased that her armies failed to eliminate the wizard, so she summons her sister Theodora, who has also been looking for the wizard in the city, and tells her that Oz has joined Glinda's side and is fulfilling the dark side of the prophecy. Everona also magically produces a small wooden music box identical to the box the wizard gave Theodora. And upon seeing the music box, she is hurt by Oz's presumed betrayal and runs up to her room weeping in tears that causes permanent burns through her cheeks. Theodora now with a completely disfigured face, is desperate to avenge Oz's betrayal. So Evanora takes advantage of this and convinced Theodora to take a bite in a green apple, as it will give her the power to kill Oz. Without flinching, Theodora takes a huge bite and transforms into a hideous beast. Elsewhere, Glinda introduces the wizard to the good people of Oz, which consists of the farmers, tinkers, and other basic trades. They all live in a peaceful existence and are super excited to meet the great wizard. Oz, worried that his popularity has gone beyond recognition, pulls Glinda away and confesses that he isn't the wizard they're expecting him to be. 
However, she admits to knowing this revelation from the moment she first met him, but that doesn't mean the people have to know because they have great hopes in him. With this new information, Oz puts on a show of confidence, convincing the townspeople that he is the wizard they hoped would return to destroy the Wicked Witch. Moments later, a mysterious cloud appears around the impregnable bubble, however this time an evil being is able to pass through in form of a meteorite because it's much more powerful than the spell surrounding the city. The meteorite is revealed to be none other than Theodora, and she reveals that she transfigured into this green-skinned true Wicked Witch due to his deception and manipulative schemes and she is hell-bent on tearing Oz a new one. Theodora soon leaves with a warning of bringing her sister's army with her for war against the wizard and Glinda, then steals a broom and rides away. Admiss the chaos, the wizard abscond to safety, Glinda meet him in his chambers preparing to flee the land of Oz. However, she tries talking to Oz and convinces him to stay. After thinking deep, Oz comes up with a plan to defeat the two wicked witches, but he can't do it alone. Oz gather the town's tinkers and tasks them to create a movie projector, and teaches them how to create black powder to make fireworks then secretly ask the master tinker to make him a hot air balloon. The following day, Oz is able to get his new illusion projector and hot air balloon into the city gates with the help of some munchkins in Nuck, who is an inside man and Glinda's ally. However, as they get into the city, Oz separates from the group and goes straight to the king's vault to take the gold for himself. He begin filling his hot air balloon with the city's treasures and prepares to flee. Elsewhere, Glinda uses her magic to create thick fogs in a poppy field, and sends her army through the cover of the fog to attack Emerald City. Evanora and Theodora sees this and also attack, sending out their entire army of baboons to stop the incoming force. The baboons tear into the soldiers, but are shocked to find that they're full of hay, revealing that they're just scarecrow built by the townspeople. The baboons try to escape but are caught within the spores of the poppy that put them into deep sleep. The town people rejoices and prepares to retreat back into the woods, but Glinda is attacked and taken hostage by a pair of winged baboons. She drops her wand into the field and is taken up into the center of the city. Evanora searches the grass for the wand, but thanks to the China girl, is unable to find it. The baboons drop Glinda in the city and is chained to a pair of posts. The angry citizens of Emerald City watch in horror as Evanora torture Glinda with her green lightning. Theodora shows to join in the torturing, but above them, Oz's balloon appears. So Theodora points at the balloon, and exposes Oz's greed as he attempts to escape with the town's riches instead of defending the town as the prophecy foretold. Theodora angrily shoot a fireball at the hot air balloon, exploding it. As the remains plummet, it creates a giant plume of black smoke. Finley runs to check the remains of the crash, but is taken aback to see Oz who's still alive and well, so they proceed with their plan. The two wicked sisters are now prepared to end Glinda. Suddenly, a thunderous voice echoes throughout the city and Oz's ghostly face appears on the plume of smoke much to their shock. He explains that his death was necessary to become the true wizard of Oz, and now he's an immortal and all-powerful wizard. The sisters doubt this and sends their armies towards the ghostly face, but nothing happened. Unbeknownst to them, Oz, Nuck, Finley, and the master tinker are in on this plan as they sit huddled in the carriage at the center of the city, projecting a moving image onto the black smoke, putting on a spectacular illusion. The frightened Evanora escapes into the castle, leaving Theodora to deal with the situation by herself. While distracted, China Girl sneaks Glinda her wand and manages to break her free. With Glinda gone, the townspeople rain fireworks down onto Theodora, forcing her to escape on her broom to an unknown land and promises never to return. As Evanora escapes, she's confronted by Glinda who's seated on her father's throne, and a force confrontation ensue, with both of them exchanging their magic powers. But their magic get too close and rebounds off sending the two to the ground. Evanora prepares to deliver the killing blow, but lacks the magic to do so. Unbeknownst to her, Glinda had grabbed her necklace during the fight which is the source of her powers and it's now shattered into pieces. This lack of powers changes Evanora into an old hag with wrinkles that lunges at Glinda, but she deflects her, sending her flying through the castle window. However, she's caught by her baboons and is carried off into the night. The following day, Emerald City celebrates, and Oz, who's now a ghost to the people with the help of his illusion projector steps out in the flesh. As he thanks his close circle for their exemplary work, Oz gives each of them a gift, but when he gets to Glinda, he takes her behind the curtain and the two kiss passionately as the movie ends. If you enjoy this video please hit the like button and also turn on notifications so you won't miss other videos like this. Thanks for watching.